Good evening viewers. Welcome to the digital video news bulletin in English language of DeadlineGujaratNews.com. Today is 9th May 2023, Tuesday. So what's buzzing across the world? Of course, the world headlines are yet dominated by the news from Russia and Ukraine. Today is 9th May. Today is a victory day for the World War II, which is celebrated in Russia as the victory day of the World War II. But uh, Ukraine has gone ahead. They have said we'll celebrate it on 8th May. However, as these celebrations had gone, the attacks continued. A wave of attacks continued and uh, ahead, I mean, on the victory holiday, victory day holiday and uh, Ukraine shot down 35 drones over the Kyiv. Uh, Ukraine is equally turning Russian tanks into kind of heavy vehicle, heavy fighting vehicle. They are kind of re-engineering the whole uh, set of captured tanks. And uh, the Ukrainian intelligence chiefs killing Russians command has kind of sparked hysteria among the Kremlin propagandists. So they've gone mad. And that's what's happening. And while the mercenaries deployment was hit by aerial bombs, uh, explore, I mean, the explosions were reported in Odessa. And air raid sirens were also heard across Ukraine. Uh, of course, this uh, following this, you know, there was a mobilization underway ahead of the expected spring counter offensive. So the, for the counter offensive, the mobilization has started in, uh, in the war zone in uh, Ukraine and Russia war zone. And Ukraine has equally received the Israeli missile warning system. Uh, this is the batch of 16 radars uh, that will be used to detect Russian missiles. So the transfer of such radars requires approval of Israel Ministry of Defense and that has been done. They have received it. Uh, EU is preparing 11th version of the sanctions on Russia uh, over the Russia's war on Ukraine and they have the I mean the EU executive body has been uh, sending the proposal to the 11th of the 11th package uh, of sanctions to the member states so this will happen very soon and while Russians uh, shelling uh, Russian shellings are actually hitting the power networks in five Ukrainian regions so they are targeting the power grids the power stations and following this, NATO has warned. They have said that Russia could target uh, undersea pipelines and cables. So this is kind of update from the war zone of Ukraine and Russia. And while moving to the other headlines which are there in the world, of course, from the Asian subcontinent, the boat tragedy in Kerala, 22 people were reported dead in the same boat tragedy. Indian Navy deployed two helicopters, uh, 15 divers to rescue the people. The Kerala chief minister has announced a judicial probe into the matter and uh, the absconding boat owner has been nabbed by the cops. This is the whole story what is going on basically in this Kerala boat tragedy. It has been in the news media since last 24 hours. And uh, what's happening in the front of China? China's foreign minister says that the nation is imperative to stabilize the Sino-US relationship. Now, this statement comes at a time, you know, when uh, Xi Jinping is expected to chair the first China-Central Asia summit this month. And amidst all this, the Chinese militia boats have crossed Indian war uh, ASEAN warship exercising in the South China Sea where boats belonging to Chinese militia uh, maritime militia they approached the area where these navies were kind of conducting a joint exercise and uh, drills in South China Sea uh, so this is what is happening and buzzing across uh, in the South China Sea and this is all while this all is going on you know uh, uh, I mean a, a Chinese diplomat says that we're looking for good relationship it comes at a time when Xi Jinping is to chair the first uh, China Central Asia meet, Chinese militia moving in the South China territory water amidst that exercise. One more news, a mysterious Chinese spacecraft has returned to Earth after 276 days. So God knows what they've done in space, but they have returned back. And uh, this is basically from the China pack in Asia and what's happening in the South uh, Korea. So Japanese PM uh, Fumio Kishida is on the first visit to Japan uh, to sorry to Korea South Korea and uh, he actually he saw the protest uh, there, was, there were protests over this Japanese PM's visit even the opposition party has slammed the South Korean president Yoon for ignoring history issues in summit with Kishida and Japanese uh, prime minister I mean Japanese PM has said that he expresses sympathy and solidarity with the Korean colonial uh, victims during the summit he has said this and he has expressed that uh, oh no this this exercise basically because after eight years a south uh, a japanese leader has visited south korea so it brings a hope for biz communities to lead efforts for closer bilateral cooperations and japanese pm seoul visit is kind of putting bilateral activities back between on backtrack between uh, south korea and japan 
and this is needed in the times when you know the threats are there from the north korea that was the intention of this visit basically to strengthen the bilateral kind of relationship uh, again backed by us and nato forces and all that and defense chiefs of both nations are likely to hold talks that is uh, been reported in yonhap a uh, news agency which is a south korean news agency and this report is uh, done quoting the sources so this is kind of an update from the asian pack and middle east if we see middle east the meeting went well between a us national security adviser uh, of the white house uh, jack so uh, jack sullivan and uh, saudi crown prince mohammed bin salman this happened this meeting happened in jeddah and uh, talking points were mainly the peace in yemen and regional developments in the gulf peninsula so i think this new city which they are building up and that all is likely to be on the agenda uh us intel leak if you remember from the pentagon which was leaked by jack tiskera young recruit uh, what has happened in that it is kind of uh, there have been some reflections which are you know worth studying is that how iran had hit the weapons among the earthquake aid given to syria which was used to attack the us troops so when the world you know all these things happen in the war zones extremist elements getting into that areas they use this cover that is a point uh, sure thing i mean but that has been reflected in the intel uh, leak data and the development from allies in ukraine turkey has rejected the us proposal to send russian s400 defense system to ukraine so of course i mean that's a russian system <laughs> why should they be sending it to ukraine so it's rejected it and anyway, which way is going ahead uh, in the Af in the updates from africa uh, sudan of course remains the center point in uh, the african media but apart from that the doctors union has admitted that there have been 100 people killed in dafrur uh, and sudan's dafrur region while this crisis were on and saudi arabia has pledged uh, aid of 100 million to sudan and the representative of the envoys of sudan basically the representatives from sudanese armed forces and the uh, rapid support uh, forces which are fighting against the sudanese armed forces the hamedati camp uh, envoys of both these camps are there in jeddah they continue to hold the talks the peace talks meanwhile sudan is stabilizing so there are some signs of peace likely to surface in sudan that's what the whole uh, narrative is all about talking on the updates from america so what's happening in the american landscape is that 100 wildfires have been reported in canada where 30000 people have been evacuated this has even this phenomena has basically forced an evacuation following the cut in oil and gas grids also and the output also so you know the situation 100 wildfires and i mean you have to evacuate it. the situation is grim over there uh, in the ongoing uh, rape trials in the trump rape trials where trump was trump is accused of having raped the jean corral writer uh, author uh, journalist and uh, jurors hear the closing arguments donald trump has rejected to testify has not gone to the court and uh, e jan carol has demanded that trump follows the court orders he honors the court orders and removes the rape trial sports so that's that's what uh, is going on and uh, you remember the texas shootout where nine people have been killed by a person who opened a fire in a mall in texas so there has been an indian national from hyderabad who is among the uh nine killed in the texas shootout and shooter happens to emerge as a neo nazi sympathizer which has been kind of uh, outputting the police investigation so a neo nazi sympathizer moving out with a gun freely killing nine people similar incident has happened again in texas somebody has rammed a car into a bus stop eight people have been killed like you know the way salman can drove it on the footpath uh, so pedestrians have been killed in this car uh, in this car ramming accident so and the driver has been held of course he has been caught by the police moving ahead to the india story what's happening in india the india news headlines are largely dominated and focused on what will happen tomorrow in karnataka because karnataka is going for the polls so is likely that congress will win the, uh, the karnataka polls narendra modi has written a personalized letter to all the voters the bajrang bali and the bajrang the ban on bajrang dal and the bajrang bali jay bajrang bali Uh, issue also remains on the core so will this fetch more votes to bjp or bjp will come in power or jds will be on which side so all this is kind of the stories which are making rounds on the media uh, so uh, that's the core topic core flavor of the news in india and of course the lithium in rajasthan the largest reserve of lithium in rajasthan after the one discovered in jammu kashmir has put india in the world top 10 lithium reserves map and uh, 
of course kerala is in news because of the boat tragedy and the kerala story supreme court has uh, already given the updates on the kerala boat tragedy but the supreme court has given uh, kind of on 15th may it would hear to the petition which asked that the movie should be banned the kerala story film should be banned across india so that hearing is scheduled on 15th may and manipur violence yet remains uh, one of the i mean the core uh, media uh, focus area uh, cyclone mocha uh, i mean a uh, orange alert has been issued in uh, kerala uh, following the heavy rainfall that's what is expected uh, west bengal has received some rains uh, karnataka has also received some rains there has been a depression in the bay of bengal and this is touching the southern territory more or less uh, manipur violence as usual i mean the uh, the things are going on the way they are trying to stabilize the situation flight fares have gone up up to 20000 for the people who want to move out of manipur whereas other people have started pouring in back after the th things are stabilizing and uh, that's more or less in the news of course the wrestlers protesting against uh, i mean demanding uh, police arrest of the wrestling wrestling federation's coach uh, that has now been supported by the mahakha panchayat uh, where farmers have also gathered and uh, the labor unions have also gathered and police is also been behaved in that uh, area in jantar mantra where the protests are happening so that's more or less the news which is there from india across and while we talk of the native news from gujarat what's happening in gujarat the bjp functionary from wapi was murdered in a broad daylight so two suspects have been nabbed police is questioning them the gujarat police has nabbed two suspects they are questioning them and uh, uddhav sena has targeted pm modi and amit uh, shah i mean prime minister narendra modi and amit shah on the 41k plus woman gone missing from gujarat the samna editorials have titles which says that now a movie on missing gujarat girl should be made because one of the leaders from bjp or gujarat are talking on this and equally the new indian express which reported the story of this 41 plus 41000 plus women going going missing with the byline of dilip si chatriya same dilip si chatriya has reported on the uh, police clarification which says that 39000 out of 41000 missing women tracked traced and returned home whereas 2124 remain yet missing and investigations are there in the police file or whatever is going on in that direction while in other developments ex dgp suri kumar seeks discharge in the gujarat riots evidence case in 2002 and uh, in a surprising development from the epicenter of gujarat uh, the state capital of gandhinagar this report has been done by the indian express and it's a beautiful report which says that reliance jio has replaced vodafone as gujarat government's official mobile service provider not airtel airtel has got the broadband contracts across in all the villages but now in the capital in the government uh, i mean uh, mobile phone services that is going to be now provided by reliance jio and this includes the landline the wireless telephony and of course the broadband and other territories also uh, so reliance has been asked to generate a new series of first five digits which will be unique and common for all the users so this is the news in gujarat danda hai bhai after all uh, commercial reality projects in gujarat has hit historic low uh, gujarat government has framed new guidelines for passa orders this uh, commercial reality projects in gujarat has hit a, has hit a historic low is a uh, nice report reported by times of india and it is worth analyzing that when you are talking growth and everything why the commercial real estate space is you know uh, dipping down uh, uttar pradesh police brings convent shetpuria to delhi gujarat to recover documents of course from him and whatever uh, activities of grilling and inquiry will happen that will happen whereas the gujarat's edible oil seeds are on a sticky wicket they have said they urge pm modi to arrest the price slide this is the news from gujarat more or less let's move to the markets the business basically the business front what has happened you know we have combined a pack of global business fights which is a comp which is a combination of what all is happening in the geopolitical aspect of the world Uh, the bilateral uh, handshakes in terms of business areas commerce or whatever it is happening in the world perspective and the india business and market updates is comprising of three divisions which is a mainstream development during the market hours the market flashes and of course the transaction flashes so market flashes are you know more or less like if the results has come how the share has behaved the markets are live what has been the indices where the ships uh, where the shares have dipped or I mean, you know, have gone up or whatever it is, and uh, in uh, transaction wise, we talk on the buy, sell, hold, and reduce calls given by the brokerage. So those are one lines you can just read and you can you know, try to understand that. And uh, 
Meanwhile, Nifty and Sensex, they ended flat on a sluggish global queues. Uh, Indian shares gave up early gains on a flat note on Tuesday amid uh, pessimism, which was triggered mainly because of the disappointing China trade data and deadlock over the US debt ceiling uh, details. Nifty closed a uh, little high, marginally high on 18 to 65.95. So Nifty has already crossed the 18,000 plus level, which the analysts were a little kind of uh, worried about. And now it's a time they said that once it crosses, still there you can buy, but now you should sell. So let's see what happens tomorrow after the Karnataka polls, how the markets react on Thursday and Friday. Uh, apart from that, uh, the Sensex has settled down 2.92 points, little low at 61.33. And this momentum was largely hit due to selling at the last moment. Uh, Indian rupee has traded a little weak uh, against the uh, strong dollar. Gold prices have marginally gone higher in the European trade while oil prices have fell. I think uh, most of these uh, currency commodities are waiting a kind of, uh, you know, uh, the US consumer and producer inflation numbers, which is likely this week. And of course, based on that, how the Fed's monetary policy will pan up. So I think based on this, the global reactions are coming. So this was the news across the day on the 9th May 2023, Tuesday. Have a great day. Have a good day. Good night and thank you. And do visit our website datelinegujaratnews.com.